every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. The groundbreaking innovation of A17 Pro is a brand new GPU. iPhone is the best mobile gaming platform in the world. The App Store and Apple Arcade have revolutionized game distribution. A17 Pro takes this incredible platform even further, laying the foundation for a new generation of mobile gaming. The computer in your pocket right now is a phone, it is an amazing camera, it is a media consumption device, but there's one thing it is not, and that's a game console, until today. So, what is this thing, and how is it different from every other iPhone game controller? Well, in this video, I want to explain how it seems that companies like Apple are headed straight for the gaming market, and how this one missing piece could change mobile gaming and the gaming market in general forever, making the pillars not Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo, but Apple, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Well, let me start from the beginning. June 21st, 2019. Gaming week! PewDiePie came out with his first Minecraft video, and I was absolutely obsessed. I knew I had to play the game, but I didn't have a console at the time. No PC, no Xbox, no Switch. But what I did have was my iPhone. And you can actually play a full version of Minecraft on your phone. And that's when I came up with the idea for a PSP Go style sliding iPhone controller. Now back then there were a few options for iPhone controllers, but they were few and far between. All of them were just way too bulky to fit in your pocket, and most of them required you to take the case off of your phone, which ruins the whole purpose of using your phone as a game console. So I was just gonna have to make my own. So I immediately bought a controller off Amazon that said it would work with iOS and looked like it was the right size for what I was doing. But when I tried to connect it, it just never did. And then, just when I needed it, something amazing happened. Apple took what seems to be their first step into gaming. With iOS 13, they added Xbox controller support to every iPhone. So I immediately went to GameStop to get an Xbox controller. But instead of spending weeks and weeks waiting to play Minecraft, designing the controller I wanted, I just designed this mount to work with the pop socket on the back of my phone. But back then, this was perfect for me. I played all summer, and it's one of my favorite summers to look back on. It also really verified to me that the iPhone is an amazing way to play games. But that was it for a few years. Until January 21st, 2023. So it had been nearly four years since I originally came up with this idea. It never left my mind. I really felt that this controller could change how people think of mobile games, but I really felt like something was missing. I could never get a clear idea of how this thing would attach to the phone. I was really picky about this. This needed to be something seamless, instantaneous, and not change anything fundamental to how I already use my phone, attached or detached. But this was the day that started everything. After four years of trying to figure this out, the answer was so obvious. It was MagSafe. And MagSafe had been out for two years at this point, but I never really understood it until I got my iPhone 13 mini, my first phone with MagSafe. But it solves all the problems I had with mobile gaming and with this controller. And it just opened up endless amounts of ideas for me, what this controller could be and what it could become later. But that wasn't it. At the same time I figured this out, the EU had been cracking down on Apple and it was looking like we would be seeing emulation allowed on the App Store, which is insane. And it's something I would never believe a few years ago if you told me. So, at this point, Apple's future in gaming was looking wild. Apple Silicon was fully integrated into the MacBook, and Apple announced that they would make porting games to Apple Silicon easier. And they did. 
because they now had a AAA game on their hardware, Resident Evil Village, and it had been out for a few months at this point. So I was starting to get worried because I felt that if I didn't make this controller, either Apple or PlayStation or Xbox or somebody would get to it first. So I had to get to work immediately. With a better defined idea of what this thing would be like and what features I wanted it to have, I ordered a Nintendo Switch controller off Amazon that looked like it had a simple flat PCB on the inside, and it did. It was perfect. I now had a base for my whole project and it was full steam ahead. I needed this thing to be thin, so the first thing I did was solder these 3DS sticks to the PCB. And to my surprise, it worked. Okay, now it just works. Oh my god, that's so cool. And then it was time for the hard part. I then spent my entire winter and summer getting this CAD model absolutely perfect. It had every single feature I wanted it to. An array of MagSafe magnets to quickly connect to your phone with or without the case. A smooth sliding mechanism to keep it as compact as possible. And to protect the sticks and buttons when it's in your pocket. The sliding mechanism can also be completely removed from the controller, so you can set up your phone with the kickstand, which you can use horizontally or vertical. So, after months and months of iteration after iteration to perfect all these features, it was finally time to put together the final iteration of Prototype version 1. So, the title of this video is something along the lines of This controller will change mobile gaming forever. I truly believe that. And right now has never been a better time. Just a few weeks ago, one of the biggest things to ever happen to the iPhone and the App Store happened. 
After a year or so of the EU cracking down on Apple for their anti-consumerism practices, Apple finally complied and now officially allow emulators on the App Store. If you had told me this when I first came up with this idea in 2018, I would have, um, <laughs> I would have done a cartwheel. <laughs> Last September, Apple announced the iPhone 15 Pro with the A17 Pro chip, which added ray tracing to the iPhone, basically making it an official gaming phone. And last November, they added ray tracing to the M3 chip in the MacBooks. And the better hardware is attracting developers like Ubisoft and Capcom, but it's just not gonna be enough to make more developers wanna port their games to the iPhone. Well, I think that this controller would not only unlock the full potential of the phone and the game's already on it, but to even go beyond that and draw developers onto this platform and maybe for them to even make tailor-made games for this form factor. But just this one prototype is never gonna do that. So, as of January of this year, I'm now the founder and CTO of MCON Innovations Inc. I started MCON to make this a real product in the hopes that it will change mobile gaming forever. Because I think when this controller is released into the market, it could be as widespread as the AirPods. So if developers could just assume that every Android or iPhone user has one of these controllers, AAA games would flood the App Store. At the end of game announcements, it would say releasing on PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, Steam, and the App Store. But how is this controller the key to just unlocking all of this potential? In 2007, when Steve Jobs walked on stage to announce the very first iPhone, you can just tell he knew exactly what he had. As I reiterated at the beginning of this video, the iPhone replaced everything. The camera, the iPod, your phone, messaging, and your computer. And since then, it's replaced even more than that. During the keynote for the iPhone 5, they showed off a really cool racing game. It looked like a AAA game at the time. It was the first time Apple really tried to push gaming onto the phone, meaning it was the first time they tried to replace this. The handheld made to fit in your pocket. And they've been trying to do that ever since, as you can see with the stuff I mentioned earlier. But the thing is, they did replace this. There is a reason the Game Boy, the DS, and the PSP are no longer a thing. And there's no big player in the game trying to make a handheld made to fit in your pocket. And no, this is not a handheld made to fit in your pocket. I believe that the iPhone is that device. Now, Apple may hold the spot in the market that the PSP, Game Boy, and DS left, but that's exactly the thing. They put that spot in the market on hold. My point is that the smartphone should not try to be something like the Switch or a PC handheld like the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally because devices like this are always gonna have a place in the market. But this literally is not a place in the market right now. And that is exactly what this controller unlocks. It's extremely portable, convenient, and it also doesn't change anything about how you're already used to using your phone. And I think that's actually one of the really big keys to this whole thing. It isn't a game console when it's connected and then a phone when it's disconnected. It's a game console and a phone all of the time. So anyway, that's why mobile gaming is going to be changed by this controller forever. <laughs> no, for real though, for me, this prototype has already done that. And I cannot wait for MCON to make this thing real so that all of you guys can have one too and experience it for yourself. So in order to make this product as good as it possibly can be, I've actually made a version two of the controller. But I'm not gonna show you guys until the next video. So subscribe to this channel in order to see it. And also to get updates on MCON and how it's going and when this thing is gonna be released. So speaking of when this thing is gonna be released, if at any point after watching this video you're interested in this controller, there will be a link in the description, this link right here, or you can scan this QR code to sign up for our pre-ordered notification. So not only will this help us get a statistic on how many people are actually interested in buying one of these controllers, but also you'll be the first to know when the pre-order goes live. So you'll be first in line. And the very last thing I want to tell you guys is that this shirt I've been wearing for this whole video is going to be available for you to buy right underneath this video actually. We now have our store right here on YouTube, but if you're not on phone or a computer here's the link right here I'm actually really proud of these shirts these are Gildan 5000s they feel really nice and I'm really proud of the design the logo for our company I made in Adobe Illustrator and I also have this awesome sketch 
that I made of the controller with Procreate on my iPad. There's a couple different variations and colors, so if you see one you like, that would be a really big help for me and my company, and it'll help get the word out too. I've also updated my Eternal Progression shirts to this nicer material. Oh, and I actually lied because the actual last thing I wanna tell you guys is that if you wanna see me or this new V2 controller or the V1 in person, I'm gonna be at Open Source from June 14th to the 16th. I'm gonna have a booth there and I'll have a bunch of controllers for you guys to test, get feedback on, look at, test with your phone. And I'm also gonna try to hold some tournaments where we play like Smash Bros or like Mario Kart and the winners will get a free t-shirt. I'm super excited for that and also to like meet all the creators and stuff. I really hope to see you there. And also the week after that is Flight Fest and I'm gonna be there I think Wednesday to Friday, I should be there for like three days. So if you wanna see me there as well, I'm gonna have my swing wing there. So if you wanna see that device, go meet me there too. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please give your feedback on this controller or anything you wanna talk about in the comments below. This has all been literally years in the making. It's been a lot of work, but it's been so much fun. It's fun to indulge in these projects that I just have so much passion for. And I still really cannot believe that I'm holding one of these things in my hands because it's been so long in the making and this V2 controller I really like a lot. I, I have it on me and in my pocket literally 24 seven all the time, no matter what I'm doing. And I cannot stop playing on it. It's, it's so much fun and it really changes everything for me. Um, so yeah. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>